just cleaning up the distributor um, it was all the plate was covered with brass metal filings mm -hmm. from a rotor hitting the cap and so rinsed all that out with carb cleaner and then went into the window and re-lubricated re -lubricated the uh, spring pivots um, and the flyweight pivots and lubed it all up and uh, now she's turning smooth and clean and uh, got a good used rotor for it and we'll throw on a new cap because the old cap got milled right on the posts and then Ray <laughs> he's doing some of the mon monotonous work restoring an old oil pan and uh, oh, show them the other oil pan. <laughs> where is that baby? Right there. Oh, yeah. So the other oil pan. <laughs> Here, get it in the light. There you go. Raised up there. Spot welds crack in there. Braised up down there. So, uh, it was in rather sad shape. So they had smeared blue goo all the way around the drain. Around, around the drain. Cause and it, it was still dripping oil. It leaked. <laughs> because of that. <laughs> <laughs> so Bubba didn't do a very good repair job on that one. <laughs> Yep. So, anyway, just some of the monotonous chores of uh, putting her back together. Um, nothing special today yet. So, uh, um, the distributor, um, oh, let me show you one little thing on the distributor. Oh, Union Coffee Break, Ray called. Okay. So, one of the things we added was the little spring clip on the bottom, which uh, it didn't have before. So, and a little anti-rattle jubby. And, uh, oh, in the uh, mounting bracket, was all bent. I don't know how that happens, but we uh, took it off and flattened it out. Got her back in shape. The way it was sitting before is because it was so badly bent, it wouldn't seat fully onto the boss on the block. There was a good Oh, three thirty seconds gap right here because that plate was so bent and then up here where the little washer is um, also had big gaps so that makes the distributor tang not seat fully into the oil pump so Oh, and in another video, I'll explain the, the oil pump situation. So, we had a new camshaft come with the kit. It was a CJ gear-driven camshaft. But, they sent the wrong melling oil pump. And the gear teeth on the oil pump slanted this way, not this way. You need them so that they mesh with the cam gear like this one does. That's the original pump. So we had to return that melling pump and get the correct gear-driven one. Teeth are 
going up and to the left. And uh, only time you want to go left. So, uh, <laughs> yep. And then, uh, um, so chain driven ones go up and to the right. And uh, the camshaft's a little different, it has a different uh, thing on the end with the plunger and stuff. So, important little detail. And then while I got this out, when you drop that distributor in, in one of my other YouTube videos, I explained that, see there's a, a skinny side and a fat side. And you want that slot so when you're done and installed, that's at about 11 o'clock. So when you put it in, you got to start like at 9.30, 10 o'clock-ish. And as you slide it in, it'll rotate in the cam gear and end up at 11 o'clock. If you do that, then your rotor which we have not installed yet, or the, we haven't installed the oil pump on this one, but your rotor will be around five o'clock. This isn't even in there right yet. So uh, your rotor will be about five o'clock, pointing at number one, and your oiler will be up here on the right, so that gravity lightly takes the oil down to the uh, uh, distributor bushing. So I got a whole nother YouTube video somewhere back on the list that explains all that. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so now Ray's setting the oil pump. And... Uh, if you look down in the hole, there we go. Okay, so there's the slot, fat side up. And uh, watch, let me see if I can get the light in there a little better. Okay, now watch as he shoves the oil pump home. Go. There it goes, and see how it rotates? Because as it meshes with the gear of the cam, and it kicks it up to about an 11 o'clock on the slot and fat side is still up okay so now he can button up the pump and then when we drop the distributor in so we got the little springy clip on the end oilers to the upper right And uh, we'll get that nut seated, threaded. Okay, he's starting the lock plate bolt. Okay. And then as we rotate this, it's being oh. stubborn. You want to work it right yeah. until it falls in. There, there we go. Just click. that clicked in. So it's shoved all the way down. Now this is tight locked in to the oil pump. You're at five o'clock, which is number one. And then your oiler is up and to the right. So it gravity feeds to the um, distributor shaft. So using the stud as a, yeah. it's 12 o'clock. Yeah, studs like 12 o'clock. So that's uh, about where it should be for a uh, properly timed engine. And you can see we're at uh, top dead center, and uh, um, number one's up top, valves are closed, so it's about ready to spark on number one. And that's how you uh, get it all static time there. Okay, getting ready to put the head studs in. So. We've got three long ones on the front. They're a little extra long because you have the oil canister bracket attaches to those three. 
so they just need to be a tad staller Ta staller taller <laughs> yep so and then if you're doing a war jeep this one would be a tall one too because it would have the uh, bonding strap that goes to the firewall for grounding so okay so what I do is I make sure the threads are good and clean you don't oil them they're dry and that the block threads are good and clean and then I use well you can't see the label but this is permatex number two it's that thick brown gooey stuff and apply it to the threads only don't squirt it in the hole some of these holes go into the water jacket some don't so you apply that put it on screw it in wipe off the excess around here so it doesn't interfere with the head gasket and if you need something to torque it in with you can use a uh, stud puller um, it shouldn't take much but uh, without the goo on there I'll show you um, that one's a little tight but you run it in till this shoulder contacts the block and it's just snug it doesn't you know it I don't know maybe what 15 20 foot pounds if that, yeah. if that. and uh, yeah that just stays snug and tight and then uh, um, and use the book when you put the head on there's a torque pattern we'll get to that later on when we put on the head so. about what happens when you run these down too far when the collar gets too far into the block what you risk yeah, if you uh, run your collar in too far into the block, then you start torquing the cast iron and you can get a split. So you want to avoid that. But if you go good and snug and with the Permatex on them, then when you put the, the cylinder head on and torque the nuts, the stud's not likely to move. So that's uh, that step. We'll get after it. Okay, getting them all in. I got two more to go. I've got to find a spare because one of them was bad. But uh, so here's basically how I go about it. Um, let me uh, prop up my camera. Let's see. Uh, come on. I'll get it for you. Yep. All right. Oh. Okay. So, little Permatex number two. Smear it on the threads. And then I like to even it out. Make sure I got the whole thing covered. All right, thread it into the hole. That stud puller, just round and round and round she goes. And then I hit that shoulder and I just give it a little tap to snug and then you got this little extra blob here. Be sure to remove that so it doesn't interfere with the head gasket. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Whoop. Sorry. So bingo.